Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. It's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. Welcome to episode 127 of our knitting and crochet podcast and spinning in this one as well. And if you're looking at this on the day that it's published, it's August 4th, 2023. We're recording this podcast in our yarn shop, which is in our woolen mill, on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. And it is a gorgeous, beautiful, sunny day with a little bit of a breeze and hardly any humidity, which has been uh, the rare thing this summer. So it's just gorgeous. So welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy that you were able to join me. If you're new here, welcome. Just to tell you a little bit about what the podcast will be today, we are going to do a farm update as we always do. Um, I will talk a little bit about um, some special projects that are happening uh, in the shop around some uh, um, rowing activities that are happening, as well as uh, some other shop update uh, things that uh, new products that we have coming in. We will have an in the mill section this time because Betsy's back. So we are designing a new yarn for Fleece and Harmony and we will have a segment on in the mill. We will talk with Simone about the projects that she's working on and uh, her, she completed her projects for Tour de Fleece. So we'll show, show uh, those completed skeins of yarn that she made. And of course, we'll talk to Betsy and find out how her trip to Norway was and her yarn shopping that she did while she was there. At the end of the episode, we'll do a little bit of a fiber festival update. The fiber festival is happening here in Prince Edward Island on October 5th to the 7th this fall. And finally, we'll finish with beautiful music and a harmony part. If there's different parts of the podcast that you don't want to see, I do do chapters. So you'll be able to move your cursor along the bottom of the screen and you'll be able to see the different sections and you can skip back and forth from uh, the different uh, sections. As always, we'll start with the farm update. And today, if you're a newsletter reader, you already know this news, but in case uh, some of you are not, don't receive our newsletter, uh, we had uh, some, something um, sad happen on the farm, but not this Monday, but the Monday before. Um, our dear Diva passed away. So for those that may be new, uh, Diva is a sheep that was living on our farm. She was already kind of elderly when we had her uh, come into our flock. And uh, we think she was about 20 years old. She had lost all of her teeth, except for one or two that were just in the front. And uh, she also had arthritis. So her morning routine was to get arthritis me medication and we made a mash for her to eat with alfalfa and grain. And she could graze on kind of the grass when it was tender, but anything like heavy hay and things like that, she wasn't able to eat anymore. So we looked after her. Um, she's been slowing down quite a lot. She's 20 years old, so it wasn't natural that she was slowing down. And she had a bit of a rough winter this winter. So we nursed her through that and uh, our biggest hope for her was that she would have a beautiful summer and if she had to go that she would go peacefully in a beautiful pasture surrounded by clover and grasses and that's exactly what happened actually. So I went out to, uh, she's usually at the barn door by 7.45 in the morning and if we're not there, we start to hear about it because we can hear her calling to us from where our bedroom is. And uh, we went out at about eight o'clock that morning, but it was all quiet. And uh, we yell to her, if she's not at the barn, we just have to yell, Diva, Diva. And she comes, she comes to the barn to get her breakfast. So we were calling for her and uh, she didn't come. And I couldn't see her. She has a pretty distinctive shape because she's very, she, she was very big. She was about almost 200 pounds and uh, she was, had very long legs. So she kind of was easy to pick out in the flock and I couldn't see her. So I went around to the side of the barn and she was laying down next to the barn in a little shady spot on the grass. And I thought at first that maybe she couldn't have gotten, she couldn't get up because sometimes she would get stiff and not be able to get up because it really looked like she was just sleeping there. 
And, uh, but when I came around and took a closer look, I could see that her head was lying down on the ground and she really wasn't moving at all. So she wasn't trying to get up. So I think she just passed in her sleep. Like, I really think that it was that there was no marks of that she had struggled at all, like to try to get up or that she had, um, sometimes when a uh, sheep is in trouble, they'll, they'll start to kind of thrash about a bit, but there was absolutely no indication that that happened. And for some of you, I know that some of the viewers actually have either been brought up on farms or know about farms. You'll know when I say this, that usually when an animal is no longer living, you can pick it out the difference between a sleeping animal and an animal that's bit passed away pretty easily just by the look the way that their body looks and i can't really describe how it is but you can tell from a quite a distance away that somebody has not had a, a happy ending um but she didn't look like that she actually just looked like she was asleep so i think that um she i think she just passed away in her sleep and that's what we had hoped for her so we were really sad and heartbroken and as somebody somebody uh, wrote to me uh after my newsletter went out that we it's always hard to lose a faithful companion and i think that that was the perfect way to say it is that we lost a faithful companion and uh, but the way that she went was exactly what we had hoped would happen for her is that she it was a beautiful glorious morning and she just fell asleep and didn't wake up. So we couldn't be sad about that. We're sad that she's not here, but we couldn't be sad about that. So that's really about all I want to say about the farm <laughs> today, because that's really been in our minds. Uh, it's been uh, a week, a full week now since she passed away, but uh, almost two weeks by the time you're seeing this. So um, that's, that's it. That's the main, the main thing that happened on the farm. So we're sad, but we're happy for the life that she had. And it was definitely our privilege to look after her and make sure that her exit was as peaceful as it was with her being pain-free and with a full belly. So goodbye, Diva, and we'll miss her, that's for sure. So we'll continue on with the rest of the podcast now. And um, the first thing that I want to talk about is the uh, Rowan make along with Martin's story. So Martin's story has designed a midwinter blanket that is being featured as a knit along or make along with Rowan. And I just want to explain exactly how that is going to work because I've had some questions and some emails about um, how to buy the yarn and is there a kit and and everything so i'm just going to answer everything um the make along actually starts on august 17th so the first pattern release will be august 17th and you register for the make along at uh rowan on rowan connect and if you go google rowan connect and you can sign up for rowan connect and Rowan Connect is kind of a hub for a lot of things that Rowan is doing. So they teach classes, they have virtual events and that kind of thing. And there is a little title uh, on the, the uh, landing page that says make alongs, or um, I think in this case, it might even say the midwinter blanket, but you'll be able to see where you click and then you register for the make along. It's free to register for it and um, you can start registering now but you will get the first pattern release will be emailed to you on august 17th so that gives you time to purchase your your yarn i um there is um yarn amounts that i have in a pdf and i think that the yarn amounts are actually shown on row and connect as well so i will double check that but um if you're a a subscriber to the newsletter at the very bottom of the last newsletter and it'll be at the bottom of this week's newsletter as well is there's three buttons under the midwinter blanket the first one um, gives you information about the uh, about the colors there's different color um, combinations that you can do you can do a two color blanket or you can do a multicolor blanket in two different combinations for both and I give the yarn quantities there on, um, on that. 
I'll also set aside a couple minutes to put up the uh, yarn quantity. In fact, I'll put this slide up with the yarn quantities while I'm talking. So if you want to come back to it later and take notes of this, uh, of this screen, then you can. And I'm not doing a set kit because I want people to be able to also choose colors if they want to choose a different combination of colors. So what I will do though, is give a 10% discount on the yarn if you buy nine or more balls of felted tweed. So the two color blankets use nine balls. The multicolor blankets use a few more balls, but even if you buy for the two color blanket, you'll get 10% off when you use the discount co code Festive Martin. And I have that on a title underneath here so that you can get the discount. So you just go to our website um, and you will just go to felt it tweed and you'll be able to pick whatever colors you want and order the quantities that you want and then enter the discount code at checkout and you'll get your 10% off uh, the yarn if you've bought nine balls of felt it tweed or more. So you can do that. I have sold out of some of the colors because um, there's been quite a lot of people that have been buying the yarn. I have an order that I just placed uh, this week. It takes usually about two to three weeks for the orders to come from Rowan. So I won't have it um, in time for the 17th. If, if uh, I, I, I'll just get it probably just slightly after the 17th, uh, but I do have lots of felt it tweed in stock. So if you do want to order and you need to substitute in particular, aluminum is sold out. That's one of the shades, but you can buy um, other grays or other light colored contrast colors um, but you can choose whatever whatever color you want to use for for that uh, replacement if you have to so aluminum features prominently in the color combination tawny and aluminum and with the tawny yarn if you actually take a look at frozen which is uh, felt at tweed 185 frozen that would also make a beautiful a beautiful combination so that's a suggestion for a replacement for that so Hopefully that explains how you get the yarn. It's not a kit per se. You just have to choose the colors and felt to tweed. I think I've probably had the, sh the slide up long enough here on the screen that you could have jotted down the colors that you wanted. If you're a newsletter subscriber, if you scroll all the way down to almost the, it's the second last thing on the newsletter, there's a button that says more information about the make along. If you click on that, you'll see a PDF will pop up on um, with all of the uh, the yarn specs that or the yarn uh, quantities that you need. So I hope that clarifies things with the and the discount code is in the show notes as well. Then while we're talking about this, Rowan has also released a number of patterns that are were created especially for this festive event that they did uh, last week. So those patterns have also been released and you can purchase those patterns on um, the Rowan, Knit Rowan or the Rowan Connect site as well. You can, you can um, shop for those patterns. I think that they're also available on Ravelry. If uh, they are, I will put it down here for sure to confirm that. I meant to check that before I sat down to record, but I think they're available on Ravelry as well. And um, I've showed uh, some pictures of those those patterns before, so you can check that out. But for sure, on the Rowan website, you're able to see those those uh, specific festive patterns, and uh, of course, you can purchase the the yarn for for those from us if you want as well. You do have to pay for the pattern, so so you have to buy the pattern. But if you need your yarns, then just let us know. We're happy to fill your order for you for those. So um, just a little quick uh, update for the shop. So I had, since we seem to be in a kind of a Christmas mode, I have a couple things more to talk about that. Um, the Christmas ornament, the fancy Christmas ornament that was designed by Joanne, those kits are still available. I still have a few kits and Joanne will make more kits for us. Um, they actually sold pretty well. So um, if there were out of stock at any time, if you order, then we will get them back in stock because I think I'm going to, going to carry them uh, all the time because uh, they, they are a great pattern and a great project. 
and uh, they sold well. So there seems to be a, a good uh, demand for them. So as long as Joanne will keep making them, we'll, we'll keep carrying them. I also wanted to draw your attention to our collection of Marie Wallen books. So we carry all of the books that Marie Wallen has uh, published. Um, I'm just out of stock in with the Cumbria book right now, but we have a stock of all of the other uh, of uh, all the other books. And later in the episode, we're going to talk about a knit along that we want to do with Marie featuring Marie Wallen. So if you need to order the books, then we do have those in the shop. Um, but as you don't have to knit a pattern from the books, if you want to join the knit along, it just needs to be a pattern designed by Marie Wallen. So I think that I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about for that. And uh, so I am going to go to the in the mill section now. And after the in the mill section, we'll do the segments that are uh, individually with Simone and Betsy. So we talk a lot about a lot of things in the in the mill section. Um, we tacked on, because the three of us are sit, sitting together in that section, we've tacked on a little bit of a book review because we found out that we're all really avid readers and uh, people were interested in the books that Simone and I talked about last uh, episode. So we'll do a book review, which also has its own chapter after In the Mill. Then I'll sit with Simone and we'll check catch up with her projects and you'll see what I'm knitting on right now because I talk about that in the Simone section. And um, then we'll go to Betsy and she can tell us all about her trip from Norway. So we'll go to In the Mill right now and I'll see you back here at the end of that. Hi everybody. Hi. Oh, were you hi. saying hi to us? Or yes. Them? Everybody. Oh. Everybody. Well, I say to, hi to them four times in, a, in an episode. Oh, I see. Right. I'm saying hi. To, I'm saying hi to you. I'm saying hi to you again. And I'm saying hi to you. And we're in the mill with the three of us. And uh, I'm just first. I'm going to say something a little bit of something about the sound because we have two microphones and we've tried everything to make the sound mm -hmm. good, but we all talk at different levels. And um, Betsy and Simone are wearing the microphones and I'm not mic'd. So now what we've tried is I have, I'm recording on the microphone on my phone in front of me and I'm going to try to sync the, the soundtracks basically so we'll see what happens and it might be and then after that we're buying a new microphone so there's one there might be one more in the mill segment with bad sound and then hopefully after that there's no more mill segments with bad sound <laughs> so um i'm not sure where i'm going to stick this in so we don't i don't know if we've talked about your stuff yet Betsy okay in the uh, podcast because I always mix the different things so well, anyway. in real time we haven't so, so I have no idea what we right. talked about so if we uh we will talk about Betsy's yarn buying trip to Norway mm -hmm. <laughs> when when we do her thing but you might have already seen it I don't know anyway in this section we're going to talk about the new yarn that we're making mm -hmm. which we talked about before which still doesn't have a name officially no nope. So just as a little reminder, in case you're new, we are designing a new Fleece and Harmony yarn. And it is made from the same wool that the Wild Winds uh, was made from. But we're doing something that we never do here at Fleece and Harmony is we're dyeing in the wool and then spinning. And we're spinning the main color with a gray to create a heathered yarn in a fine gauge so it's a it's a light fingering i would say and um we're planning on having 15 or 16 colors <laughs> and we, for weeks now we've been working on um doing different experiments with the colors betsy's yeah. been dying and dying colors <laughs> yarn <laughs> dying the yarn dying the yarn <laughs> and uh we've got a few of the colors that we have here just to show you kind of like oh, where we're you're going showing the nubby ends oh it's betsy okay. also does the skeining of the yarn and she's very particular let me flip this over <laughs> she's, she, I, there I, we go oh okay there we go so these are some of the colors that we have 
so as part we this segment is dedicated to the process of what we're doing and um it's really all about the we've already talked discussed about the spinning of it yes um and betsy is going to tell us about the dyeing because we've edited it already so yeah because we don't really know what the colors are going to look like until we make them right it's it's really hard to predict um combining the two colored fibers and what they'll actually look like once they're spun. I assume once we've done it more often, we might get a little better at that. Right. We're working with a couple different shades of gray as our base and then the, the colorful part of the color. So sometimes the base gray is a little uh, lighter, sometimes it's a little darker. So choosing which to pair those up with um, is a little bit of a guessing game to start. So with some of them, we did that and we basically just ended up creating another shade of gray because right. <laughs> right. the the colored part got lost in the gray so we on the other day we laid them all out and just sort of looked at them together as a cohesive palette and went okay what looks too similar to each other mm -hmm. can we edit out and what are we missing so mm -hmm. that's at the mm -hmm. stage we're at so we decided we needed to make four changes right um so now we have to actually create those four changes right before we're which we started to today yes mm -hmm. so betsy's did. only been back to work uh this is her second day back to i have work. lost all track of time this summer <laughs> yeah. i have no idea <laughs> it's all become oh one. no it's been a week has it been a week you sure okay no it's been a week <laughs> I, last yes. week you didn't work on this no no all right so um so Simone's been processing wool because now we've got to do four more colors and mm -hmm. then we'll do a final edit and then we'll have the final colors. So we thought ambitiously that we may be able to launch the yarn in this podcast, but we're, we're going to wait um, till the next podcast to launch it because we're also decided we should be have like a cohesive plan yes. mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. So this is just a sneak peek of some of the colors. So um, I'm not sure if there's any edited colors that are in this. No, I purposely not. didn't show any of the. Okay. Yeah. Any of it. <laughs> we have full batches of the colors we took out. So those will be available in the store only because we won't list them online. But we'll we'll have a few more colors for the first little while online or uh, in the store. So what we decided to do is we thought that it would be great to have a knit along to launch our yarn. And there's a designer that we all love, and but we have never done a knit along with her designs. Mm -hmm. So inspired by um, uh, Simone's Rianne, because we, she's probably already showed it, or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. So Rianne by Marie Wallen is a project that uh, Simone's been working on. Mm. And you use that pattern as uh, the the swatch for this yarn, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Ooh and ah, uh, yeah. I really liked it for the twisted stitches and the lace and yeah. the cables, like a lot of fun. I didn't have an opportunity to do color work yet, right? But, but we have somebody doing color yes. work as well, so we've seen how the color work turns out. So yeah. it was important as part of the designing process that it looked good in cables, that it looked good in twisted stitches, that you could use it for lace and you could use it for color. Mm -hmm. We didn't want much. No, <laughs> we just, we just wanted asked it to do everything. Yes, yeah. exactly. And we actually are, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I think we've, I think we kind of got something that does that. So we want it to think of a knit along that people could use, you could, you could use this yarn that's yet to be named, mm -hmm. or you could use some of the other popular yarns that Marie Wallen liked to, um, liked to knit with, which she was, she really knit a lot of designs and felt it tweed. Mm -hmm. So um, for the knit along, you can use whatever yarn you want. You can even use her British breeds if you want, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever yarn you have. Um, but we found that she did crochet projects mm -hmm. with felted tweed and with summer light DK. She summer light uh, sorry, four ply. Yeah. Summer light four ply. Yep. In filigree, right? Yes. Yes, in yes. the filigree book. Yeah. I have most of Marie Wallen's books in stock. I think I'm only missing um, Cumbria because Cumbria. I sold yeah. I sold out of it. So uh, I'll be getting that back in. I just don't have it in stock now. So we have all of her books. And um, she's a prolific designer mm. with great designs, yeah. and we've never done a knit along. Yeah. Yeah. I looked her up on Ravelry, and I think it came up with like fourteen hundred 
patterns or something oh, really? like that from a rewall. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. And there's crochet too. Crochet so, and knitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. open to people that knit and, and crochet, crochet. Yeah. which is kind of fun as well. Yeah. Yes. So it's really like an all-inclusive knit along. Yeah. Um, so we'll we will tell you more about that. There's not much Choose your patterns now <laughs> yeah. that you want. So Simone and I have made a decision about what patterns we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's out of the Wildwoods uh, book. Yeah. So Simone is doing a um, cowl. Right, the Rowan cowl. Ironically called the Rowan cowl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rowan is a tree in... Yes. England yeah. and here actually yes. too. We have so, a lot of them here. Yeah, so yeah. It's, that's, that has nothing to do with Rowan. Is it's, that the Rowan oak? No, they're the ones with the little red berries. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's, there's a place, berries. I think, in the States, Roanoke. I it's actually it Mountain is. Ash, I think, isn't it? Oh. Simone she probably knows the Latin name. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that Fucus serratus. <laughs> oh, yeah. That does not sound pleasant. No. no. <laughs> that was the seaweed, remember? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. You made the mistake of asking me about a seaweed name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think Rowan is a mountain ash. Yes, or dogwood sometimes. It's called dogwood, too. Mm, yeah. But Just there's colloquy. another another yeah. plant named dogwood as well. There is. Dogwood in the ditch. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we're bringing out all the fun color names. Yeah. Now. That was what the original, in my inspiration for cranberry scones. Oh, okay. Those dogwood okay. branches in the ditch. Oh, and actually okay. somebody commented. Thank you for commenting because I had a good chuckle this morning. She said, well, I kind of think you should have gone with dogwood in the ditch. She it's, said, it's perfect. It's perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to back to our unnamed yarn. Yeah. So, or sorry, the knit along. Yeah. So uh, you're going to do the Rowan cowl, mm -hmm. and you're going to use the the new yarn. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do the walnut tan, tan mm -hmm. and I haven't decided. I may do it out of um, I may do it out of felted tweed, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I haven't. I don't want to have another yarn that I haven't knit with. Like right. My point was <laughs> like. And I think I might have decided on mine. Oh, okay. I think it was called the Lovely Shawl. And it's actually out of um, Rowan Fine Lace. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a crochet. So I'm going to go with the crochet pattern. Oh, okay. And yeah. are you going to crochet it out of uh, Rowan Fine Lace? I think so. Okay. Because She's it's really the pretty. Color. I picked the color. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you were gone for like five minutes, Kim, and missed everything. Yes, I know. Wow. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So we all have, and we, we purposely chose smaller projects because we know, like, we're, we're swamped with knitting. Yes, yeah, although yeah, mine's so. still five balls of row and fine lace, so I don't oh, really wow. know how small it is. Okay, but it's crochet. crochet goes faster, yeah. and you eat up more yarn. Yes, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's a good, that's good. Yeah. So we'll have, uh, so the moral of the story is you can use whatever yarn you want mm -hmm. and uh, just knit a, or crochet a Marie Wallen pattern, and you can be part of the knit along, which we will give you more details in the next uh the next episode it'll yeah. start after we launch the next episode yeah and we'll have our new yarn as well yeah. yes so as always i don't want to promise this because we don't know how the next four colors go right but if it's available i will put it in the newsletter okay and the newsletter people will be able to know if it's available or not so it's kind of like a soft a soft launch mm -hmm. if it's available so if you're a newsletter subscriber, check your newsletter. If it's not there, it's because something didn't quite go good, quite, yeah. <laughs> quite right. <laughs> we had to do we had to change something. So that's uh, that's it. So I just remembered one of the colors we're doing. So I've said what I'm going to do, but I remember one of the colors that's coming. And if it turns out half as beautiful as I think it might. I might have to change. Is that so the one we'll on the see. shelf right now? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of Bessie's favorite colors. You can all figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the that's the in the mill um, update into yeah. the make along Marie Wall and make along. So check out your patterns. You've got fourteen hundred to look through. Apparently, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Yes. Yeah. And um, any of Marie Wallen's, we have her books. Um, we have the books that she were published uh, that she published with Rowan, and um, any of the patterns that are in those books, as long as it wasn't in a numbered Rowan magazine, you can buy singly on Ravelry. Oh, nice! So, and then she's also designed independently other 
patterns. So there's lots of patterns that are available that if you don't want to buy a book, then you can you can mm -hmm. find them on Ravelry as well. So I have a note about actually the best news about In the Mill this week. What? That heat finally broke. Oh, yeah. Not that the I humidity. can really complain about it because I missed like almost all of it. Yeah. But it was pretty brutal for the like two days I had to live with it. So yeah. I can only imagine. So I was doing some dying <laughs> while Betsy was gone. Yeah. And I have to say that um, I, well, Simone and I, I didn't tell you this. Simone and oh. I had a conversation. I said, I would never be a dyer. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I said, I know they get all excited. About oh. all the colors or anything, but man, it's hot. It's hot yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So yeah. uh, it was. I was dripping. You just you just have something. to embrace the sweat and go with it. None of this like glistening idea. No, no it's a full on sweat. Yeah, I carry what do I I call it my my swamp rag or something. Yes. I have a yeah. handkerchief that I'm like wiping, wiping my brow. Right. 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 And we got the garage door open, open yeah. and everything, but it still doesn't yeah. help. And it, and it was some days it was like 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is that? And 90% humidity. 85 with 82% humidity. 82% yeah. so, yeah. humidity. Yeah. So that's actually yeah. like almost raining inside. Yeah. 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 Just shy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, um, uh, Luckily, because in that type of weather, you sometimes can't spin either. You but we, well. yeah, we actually were able to still spin, which yeah. is a bit of a miracle, I have to say. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. anyway, so that's the that's the in the mill. So now um, we're on to the next section. Did we forget okay. anything in, in the mill? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No, no. Is the book book section? Yo, oh, because... oh, right. This I haven't been part of this section no. yet. No. <laughs> oh, so last episode, Simone and I were talking about the books that we're reading. Yeah. And people seem to like it. So mm -hmm. we, and so, um, Betsy is an avid reader as well. Yes, I am. Like very well read. <laughs> and she's also a reader that reads things more than once. I think I'm the only one here that doesn't read things more no, than once. Like, um, only what I talked about with you. Yeah, oh, that's okay. the, Oh no, that's not true. I have read okay a few things, not regularly. Oh, okay. Read Simone things, regularly yeah. reads things more than once. I do. So. Okay. No, I yeah. don't. Yeah. So <laughs> I was secretly always impressed how she could remember the name of every single character in every book that she read, no matter how big or how small it was. And I was like, wow. I know my brain does a data dump every three months. <laughs> I don't. I can't remember anything. But then she said, "Well, sometimes I." I reread, yeah. See, yeah. I've been known to get a book from the library, start reading it, and go, why do I know exactly oh. what's going to happen? Because yeah. I don't retain the titles of books that oh, I've read, okay. or the authors, which is right. terrible. So quite frequently, I've actually picked up the same book that I have already read. Do and then I catch on partway through. My mother-in-law has a little trick for that, because she's also a prolific reader. Right. And she borrows from the library. She writes her initials. In the back page, in the little <gasps> corner, so she knows if she read it or not. I don't even. I probably shouldn't even say that. I can't but... even like write my own name in my own book. I know. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, oh wow! Oh wow! Can but I mean, she goes and stacks like this <laughs> from the library and Me just too. tears through them. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Oh, I could just write it down. Sorry, Lee. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, There's we've all outed technology. technology. <laughs> oh. That's funny. That's really funny. I, I, I'm like you. I don't even, I don't even, I freaked out one time because I lent a book to my mother and I saw a cheese doodle fingerprint oh. on the corner of one of the pages oh. and I was, I, terrible thing happened was I borrowed one of Simone's book and the cat jumped up and knocked my coffee <gasps> over it. So I ordered another one, okay. but I couldn't get the exact copy. And Simone's like, well, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But for me, that would have been a big deal. So you, were, you were very gracious. I take Kim's books home in a Ziploc bag <laughs> and I store them in a Ziploc bag while they're Which at my house. Which makes me feel terrible. <laughs> No, it just, just, very oh, it's just yeah. safer that way. <laughs> and then I accused somebody of stealing it because I forgot that I liked it. Anyway, so oh. I started reading Pillars of the Earth, which I went right to the back page. What? I know it's an old book. I went right to the back page and it said 937 pages. Oh, okay. And I said, okay, that should be good till next August. But I said I am going through it like 
crazy. I'm all, I only have 200 pages left and really? I, and I started just, I hadn't started it. I don't think yet when we talked the last time. No, I two weeks ago. I think you might've read just page or two, it. but yeah. yeah, that was it. So, and I, then I thought I read a lot of, I'll call them documentary books, like mm. nonfiction. And, yes. That's the proper name. Nonfiction, yep. <laughs> nonfiction, or I'm learning something or I'm studying something or mm -hmm. whatever. So I haven't actually read just for the pure pleasure of reading mm -hmm. in a long time and this book is what I'm doing with this and I'm just it's I'm ravenous about it <laughs> so ravenous that I haven't knit on my tomb Tisha I was gonna say I think we're all of the old school where we actually like to hold the book yes. when we read too yeah, so it does interrupt knitting time if you really like holding an actual book because yes. you I, I can't hold the book and knit at the same no. time so. yeah either. if it's stock and net, I can prop the book with my foot. Oh, impressive. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have, and we need to see a picture of that. All right. We need to see a picture of that. So she also doesn't, is one of these knitters that doesn't look at her knitting. Yes. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. No way. No. So, um, so much to my surprise is that there's a wool merchant. So mm -hmm. Pillars of the Earth, it's an old book. I don't know when it was written. It's 20 years old. Yeah. I think, yeah. Around 20 years old. Yeah. So on the bestseller for months and months. So half of you have already read it. But I, <laughs> I, I've had it since it came out. But I don't know why I didn't, when I opened it and started reading it, I, I couldn't get into it for some reason. I think I kept thinking 937 pages, 937 oh. pages. Anyway, I didn't know that there's a the heroine, one of the main characters is a wool merchant. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you know how serendipity things happen. We're not gonna tell you what the book's really about because you want wanna read it if you didn't read it. But it takes place in the eleven hundreds in England. And um I was like oh. so the, we started talking about she at the the uh, woman asked about uh historic knitting. So they were looking at, she was looking at the, the Viking, the Viking myths. Yes. And I said, oh, yes, for the historical interest. And she said, yes, of course. And her husband <laughs> was there a lot. He was laughing. And she says, look, hon, this looks like it's a really old, an old style pattern. He goes, mm hmm yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so then I said, well, I actually do have Outlander knits as well, that book. So those are based on the, the show. So yes. they are probably more, a little bit more historically accurate than the Viking, Viking knits. Viking <laughs> and uh, look it up. If you're wondering why we've all stood it sitting here with the earth <laughs> smirk, <laughs> smirk on our face. Okay, so then so then he comes out with the fact that he's actually a historic reenactor. Ooh. And um, I said and I said something about reading Pillars of the Earth and he goes and I said that's set in the eleven hundreds. He said that's the period that I reenact. Oh nice. That's so cool. Yeah. All connections. So, weird. so I was talking about he was telling me about his now I'm gonna say maybe I'm gonna say it wrong, but his basin hat skull cap something or other as part of his uniform okay. or whatever and he had pictures of himself playing with swords and everything oh. like it yeah yeah cool so i and i was like i spoke knowledgeably about the armor <laughs> <laughs> and anyway oh. it's so funny that's what reading can do for you yes that's right, that's right. even fiction yes you can learn some yes exactly <laughs> and you, what were you reading I've you talked been... about okay. Oh, this all started because of land fear. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So I finished that book, and I was just that was the wheel of time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The last book in the wheel of time. It was okay, but I was kind of disappointed oh. with the way it ended. Oh, it was no. predictable. Oh, but okay. That's fine. I but. sometimes wonder if some of these book series go on and on forever and ever because the author just can't figure out how to give it. That really good ending. He died, and oh. he had to have somebody else write oh, yeah. from his so, notes. Mm, so, okay. but you had said that yeah. he was doing a pretty good. He job. was doing fairly well. He was making it cohesive, but it did feel rushed. Okay, yeah. even though it was like a thousand page book. Well, he, wasn't, he wasn't telling his story, probably. So yeah, that would be hard. Yeah, yeah that would be a all, all the Game of Thrones people under or game of thrones sorry <laughs> game, game, of, thrones, yeah. <laughs> game of uh thrones. thrones people are saying we know yep um, yeah yep. i might be one of those oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> although i did like the television series a lot more than the books okay oh. yeah. i Which didn't make it past the first 
book on that one. Yeah. No, no. So yeah. when you talked about Wheel of Time, mm -hmm. um, so the Land Fear Cowl that uh, Simone launched in the last podcast is named after a main character. After a character, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. after a character. Yeah. And um, uh, then it showed up on my uh Prime, I think that there is actually see they're in season two. Are they on season two now? Yeah. Oh. So I had. Did you watch season one? I did. And is it good? Yes. <laughs> She's Was so you that like as good as the book or no? No. no. It's, so the book is if better. you pretend like you've never read the books, the series oh, okay. is good because okay. they kind of haul things in from different times. Oh, okay. And they're placing it earlier in the series, so okay. there's that, and then there's certain things that are just. A little out of sync okay so okay yeah it, it's is. good yeah but you the just have to is... pretend that you didn't read the books right and yeah. now you're on a new book yeah and yeah. it's uh, what is it post captain by patrick o'brien captain okay yeah. and people have written to me and said what books were you talking about mm -hmm. i will put the names and oh, of the below. books and the authors in the show description yeah okay so i went from fantasy Right. To historic fiction. Right. And this book is about a naval officer right. and a doctor in the 1800s in the British Navy. And there are parts in it that are laugh out loud funny. Okay. He's telling Betsy about the drunk ape. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, you need to read it just for that. Yeah, yes. About the drunk ape. Oh. Yeah. But it's kind of neat too because they're obviously spending a lot of time on sailing vessels and it... They give you a chart at the first of like the first section of the book that goes over the different portions of the boat, the different sails, because it is kind of important to know that for the stories. And it kind of gives you a scope of just how large these sailing vessels were and how many people it took to man them. Right. Like, it, it's really amazing. You know, um, it's funny that you said that because I'm at a point where in the Pillars of the Earth where they're, they build cathedrals in that, this mm -hmm. book and they're talking about all these different types of vaults and everything. And mm -hmm. I was just, I was look I was thinking to myself this morning, I really wish that they'd had some kind of a diagram yeah. that yeah. showed there's beautiful plates in the book that in between the sections that show like a, arches and things like that. But I have no idea if I'm looking at whatever they want to the preceptor right a vaulted or a barrel vault or a, well, I have no <laughs> idea. So they, that might be one of the little things that's missing. From yeah. That. That's a good, that's what's good for yeah. that author to have done that. Yeah. About the boat. Yeah. yeah. And we have a funny joke at home. It might be a little bit risque, but you know, <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, that expression, yeah. right? Well, there's a sail in the end of the boat called a spanker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we turned it, I like the cut of your spanker. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty mild, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid for a minute. Yeah, I was, I I think was you're wondering good. where we were going. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So not, yeah. It's not the spinnaker. It's but actually it's a spanker. spanker. It's a spanker. spanker. Okay. And um, you read a lot of Canadian authors. Um, I have recently, yeah. yeah. So Louise Penny, I've been following her for years. The she does mystery novels, murder mystery novels, um, and I like them because they're just they're I don't know. Actually, I like them because it, it makes me want to go where she's talking about. Okay. Like I want to go mm -hmm. live in Three Pines and eat at the bistro. Yes, exactly. <laughs> eat at the oh. bistro and hang out on the village green, and yeah. like she just makes me. She even makes me want to garden. Oh, okay. But I don't like gardening at oh, all. Okay. So I think there's just something about how she writes that really pulls you into the environment of the story. Oh, okay. And that's what I really like with her so writing. So she's from Quebec? Um, I'm not sure that she's originally from Quebec, but her stories are all but they're based in Quebec. In Quebec. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they are, so yeah. that was going to be the question. Yeah. A little tiny ask. town about an hour from Montreal. Right, is okay. Kind of the... Is it like the eastern townships or something yes, like that? I think okay. so. Yes, okay. Yes, all right. Yeah. Which is lovely. Oh, yes. I, I, I know I've never been. Yes. I need to go yeah, and check it out. Go. So. Yeah. They're okay. fun for just like quick reads. You are talking, I read the, the big novels in general. I actually choose my novels at the library based on how large it is. Oh, <laughs> just because the longer the story, the more entertainment. Right. But these are a little bit quicker and more succinct. And they do follow, um, if you've never read any of them, I would recommend starting with one and following them in order because the same characters go throughout. Mm, yeah. It's a different murder mystery in each one, but the main characters um, that live in this village stay the same. So if you want to follow their story in a, 
chronological order. Yes. That's, right. that's to read you can them see as them written. progress yes. throughout the series. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. grow and change. You've read that series as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, people have commented about the audio book versions, and mm -hmm. somebody wrote that apparently the um, is it Audible? Is that yes, the Audible the version of Pillars of the Earth is particularly well done? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not really, I don't know, I barely retain it when I read it. So I can't imagine if I was just listening to it and knitting at the same time that I would be able to retain it. But you you read, or you listen I to I do listen book. to audiobooks sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And um, what do you find? Do you find that it... I find it's actually not bad. It's, yeah. I listen to them mostly whenever I'm going for a run. Yeah. And the most recent ones that I listened to were The Bear and the Nightingale and The Girl in the Tower. It's two parts of a trilogy okay and it's written in a russian fairy tale-ish type oh, okay light light listening yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's actually really good i think it's classified as young adult oh but okay. it's it's one of those stories that just kind of grabs you and keeps you oh, and cool. it's so magical and you are going to write all these yeah. titles down right well I'm, yeah, I was just, to... I'm just thinking okay so you're you're both going to have to text me with the titles that we yeah, talked yeah. about yeah mine's okay. just a whole series louise penny yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the three pines is also a series well it's no so the the whole she's only ever written about this same little town um with the main character being inspector gamosh okay um or however you want to say his name and that the stories follow his career basically oh, okay mm -hmm. so. and is the series as good as the book the tv series yeah. no no okay. not no. even remotely uh, they, definitely definitely yeah no they not. just they tried to cover i mean she, i think she has almost 20 books so they tried to cover so much in one season that it was convoluted and they i understand what they wanted to do they wanted to touch on some current events mm -hmm. and such and there's a time and a place for that but i i yeah. think her stories were good enough on their own yeah so yeah. Yeah. i have to say uh i just now uh, we should probably wrap, wind, this up. wrap this up but <laughs> I, I have to say that about um, I read the original Anna Green Gables book yes. before Arna and Carlos oh, come I because know I know going. going. And I watched the 1987 series of with Megan Follows, which was actually really almost good. word for yeah, word really from good. the book. Very pleasant. Like there were tough things in there. Yeah. But Anne with an E, I was just like, oh come on. Like when you try to touch on all of the crap that's happening now. Yeah. And relate it to that. And I'm sure that it's more literal mm. and more true to what they're... I mean, it, yes, we agree that being an orphan was probably not the most pleasant, happy-go-lucky yeah. time for any child. But that's not why you read Anne of Green Gables. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. And the original Anne is... It's one of my favorite books. It's yes. beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And the way she just like Lucy Ma describes PEI, I find it to be like incredibly accurate. Yes. With yes. the foliage and, you know, the spring growth and she takes you all the through the seasons. Blossoms and, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's um anyway, it's it's there's a place to have those kind of things and references and stuff yeah. like that, but I'm not sure. That Just write new certain... stories. Yeah, exactly. Write a new, write a new story. Yeah. And it'll no. be excellent. But <laughs> don't muddle around with <laughs> classics. And try to bring it up to up to modern, uh, times. modern times. Yeah. Yeah. And let's face it, sometimes we're reading to escape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we don't yeah. have to look at the news. So that's it. So we're, we're getting the wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, the producer saying you're completely off topic topic. But I think that's the end anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we'll put all but now we've talked about a lot of books. All right. Yeah. So we'll do a list in the uh in the show notes. So take a look at that if you want to look at any of the books that we talked about. Yeah. And the next episode of In the Mill slash book review will um will have our new yeah. Okay, great. Bye. 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 Wow. So we talked a lot <laughs> about the books. So um and the new yarn. So uh, we described a little bit more about the the Marie Wall and knit along or make along in that section as well. So that's a little it's a little bit long, but uh, you see that we're still making progress with the new yarn. Um, we've narrowed down a name, but we just didn't want to, we were not a hundred percent sure yet. So, uh, the yarn will be launched in the next podcast, which is 
two weeks later than what we thought it was, but we just want to take the time to make sure that we have everything uh, um, perfect for the launch of that yarn. So now we're going to go um, and see our, my conversation with um, Simone. So we wrap up the information and what we did for Tour de Fleece. So there's hand spinning there. And then we'll uh, talk about uh, Simone's project. She's got Rianne uh, knit it almost finished actually she's working on the sleeves now so this is a great Marie Wallen project um, I have my tune and my trite by um, Kate Davies that I've worked on and Simone has started a new project and so she's got a, a in progress project that's almost done and then a brand new project that she started so let's go and see what she has to say hi Simone hi Kim how are you good and you oh, I'm good I'm good we're we're stripped down today <laughs> yes it's <laughs> still <laughs> hot yeah it's actually not bad today but yeah. we're inside and I mean we kind of looked easy breezy last time because out there on the deck and everything it was but we're not taking any chances that's right this time right <laughs> So we have quite a lot to talk about. We do. Yeah. So shall we start with uh, the Tour de Fleece because um, that's kind of cr in chronological order. Yes. So Tour de Fleece finished on July 23rd. Yep. And Simone finished on July 23rd. Two projects. <laughs> and I still have this much left of the first half of my project. But you were so close. <laughs> <laughs> to have half of it done. Yes. <laughs> That's all that so, matters though, right? So this is my bobbin. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's getting pretty full. And I just have this little bit to do. And then I thought about it that when I looked back at the, the podcast um, from last time, mm -hmm. is that the, when we're talking about the fractal spinning, just cavalierly saying tip to tip, yeah. people might not really understand what we, what we meant. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to explain that. Sure. You always spin as a fractal because like you said you like the color play I that do. it gives you yeah so this was the my first time doing it so just to be really really clear for people is that the roving comes is that half it is okay so double the size of this is the size of the roving that I that I had and Simone had yeah and what we did was we split it in half so that this ended up this is now the half the half size and yep. this is ha the half size right and then the other piece so this is a you spin it from the beginning to the tip this thick piece right then you take the other thick piece and you divide that in half again yep. all the way down so you end up with two um, they, they don't look like they're even, but they are actually even. I probably may, didn't split it exactly in half, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So you end up with two more balls mm -hmm. and rovings that, um, you're, I'm going to spin from the same end, the first one, first, so we'll go down on the first one. And then in the second one, I'm going to start at the same end and then spin another that's right. Double the amount. Yep. Okay. So now that I'm almost finished my first part, the tricky part that it, for me is going to be that now I have this fiber on my nose. <laughs> the tricky part for me is that this is half as thick as the piece of roving I was spinning before. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to have a hard time keeping it the same gauge as the first roving I did. I don't think you will at all. No? No. Okay. I think you'll be able to do it because it's just going to go faster because it's less fiber in your hand. Right. Or at least that's my So experience. if I, because I, when I, to try to keep my gauge um, even, I try to look to see exactly what the fiber stream looks like as I'm mm -hmm. pushing it through my fingers. So if I just, I remember what that looks like. Right. So you just keep it the same, but you're just going to go through through it faster. Yeah. And you won't have as much of going, having to go across exactly. the top of the... Yeah. yeah. There'll be probably very little of moving back across. Okay. Yeah. So not so much flip-flip. Right. Uh, so anybody that is curious about the flip-flip with the wider... <laughs> yes. That's a like technical this, term. Yeah. The flip-flip. Flip -flip. <laughs> you're spinning across the top. So you, what we tend to do is you spin in one direction. And it's easier to go in one direction than the other for most people. Right. So instead of fighting our way back, we just 
flip the roving right and then flip it back so you right. just kind of zigzag across the end yes and it makes it easier to manage so what i've discovered though which i don't know if i'm i'm sure it's nothing new but um so when you see how thick this is mm -hmm. i don't i can't uh can't really find the end of this so it's here somewhere but i, I just tucked it in yeah <laughs> i know you simone helped me with these but oh it's, yeah. is it right there yeah okay so this is the difference in the thickness so this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So this, yes, okay. I think I'm going to be able to see that, okay? Yeah. So, um, but what I discovered is that if I'm really, really careful with this and I draft it, I start it out with a kind of like I do a little bit of a pre-draft at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if I just do this perfectly, I can actually keep it at a point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So is that like kind of going to the next skill level? I kind of think it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. The spinners out there are going, oh, brother. Okay. <laughs> because then if I get it going right, mm -hmm. then I don't even have to flip because it just keeps coming out like nice and smooth yeah. at a point. Yeah. And it certainly okay. doesn't hurt that that's blue face left and silk. Okay. Because it's just one of those fibers that has a tendency to draft very well it's lovely yeah it's it very is. smooth yeah going okay if i can keep it going so i'm thinking i can't always keep it going mm -hmm. but i was thinking to myself that the ability to keep it going it's is there. probably something that you learn yeah to do yeah okay. See, you're already challenging yourself yes <laughs> yes okay i can't stop unfortunately i can't stop doing that okay so then that's my that's how the fractal works yeah. if for people that don't spin and never really truly understood it which yeah was me before I started when I actually saw how it was done and this is my little bobbin so far so I think I actually get quite a bit of yardage on here I think you have a fair bit yeah, yeah. I, I spin pretty fine I yeah. find yeah I not necessarily on purpose it's just that's where I'm that's comfortable your default draft. Yeah, yeah my default yeah. yeah so which is fine by me yeah because I'm gonna it's going it's going to be a two ply so it'll be double that yeah so I haven't seen this bat before though or ah, yeah this is um this is some fiber from Sweets Kind of Mind. Yeah. And I think she's coming to the Fiber Festival. She yes. is. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I am playing with some of her lovely hand dyed fiber. Okay. So nice. That's of, a nice, soft, kind of misty kind of is. color. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the fiber? I think it's Coriadale. Okay. I'm not really sure. Right. Uh, but I did want to say with these fractals, sometimes it can get difficult little difficult to tell which end you're supposed to be right. working from so something that i like to do is I oh. put a little knot okay in the end that i'm not working with oh so okay not for not oh okay smart <laughs> and then yeah. just coil it up like this and since i'm spinning on a support spindle right i'm just tearing off chunks oh at a time. okay yeah. oh, okay so you don't have to try to keep anything yeah so you have two skeins finished though i do from your other your other spinning so let's yep. let's take a look at those first right. so this one is the rito arcot yeah and it's a note of fingering yeah 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 just a two ply it's got a nice size skein eh? it is do you know what it weighs it's 100 grand oh okay because i use that fun little trick that you showed me on the plier oh okay so i use up every scrap of oh, the okay. <laughs> i have a i don't i'm i'm have a bit of a reputation for not wasting anything when we're plying but and it's perfect because yeah. it works well with hands too yeah okay yeah. excellent okay <laughs> so yeah good size very squishy yeah and i have no idea what it wants to be yet but um i'm pretty happy with this yeah and, and it looks like it's not quite a worsted eh? yeah it's a fingering yeah a two-ply fingering yeah. okay yeah that's yeah. a nice like a nice amount of yarn yeah i yeah. haven't measured the yardage yet but yeah it, it's a good bit yeah so yeah. and how are you going to measure the yardage oh that oh, just a little bit of math okay so i just pull it out like this and i measure from one side to the other okay double it for inches right count so okay how many i yeah. have exactly what we do when we skein off something and we forget how much we skeined off because the, yeah. the bobbin ran out or something like that okay so exactly yeah it's just a little bit of math yeah yeah okay 
So uh, that gives me a pretty good amount. And I usually take off two loops. Okay. Just to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to run out because mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, a little bit particular about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, yarn chicken's no fun. No. Okay. And then this is the fancy sparkly one. Yes. I think you called it unicorn bar. Yes. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Was that my out loud voice? <laughs> so I'll hold it up close. Not because it's not beautiful. But yeah, the sparkles. The sparkles. The sparkles. Yes. I love sparkles, but oh my goodness. Yeah, they're like, everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But it was really fun. And again, it's it's another like fingering weight-ish. Yeah. And it's got sari silk in it. It does. Yes. So this is Corydale. Um, Shetland, some Icelandic from Blomden Farm, right. um, Sari Silk, Angelina. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Okay. Yeah. So you want to know something a little bit scary about algorithms and social media and AI and everything? Okay. Is that we had a big bump in our viewership. And when I looked at the statistics, a lot of it was coming from India. Okay. And YouTube will tell the creators what people searched on to find your video. Mm -hmm. And people were searching on sorry. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so the fact that you just mentioned like three or four, maybe five episodes ago. Right. That you were using sorry silk mm -hmm. in this is the only place ever in one of my podcasts that a sorry was mentioned. Yeah. And it's not even a sorry. It's a piece of a sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's a fiber. <laughs> and that that means that we were trending in India for oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> because people were searching for sari draping yeah. and things like that. So I actually I thought, okay, well, people were watching us, so that's and yeah. they were the, watching for longer than I yeah. mean, they probably were wondering what how the hell did I get here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in this podcast but um i i found i thought it was it's good yeah but i also found it kind of scary yeah because you it, have to be careful what you say yeah yeah, yeah. you don't want to say something that you don't want repercussions <laughs> like you know the what is it the the ripples the moth wings or oh, butterfly the, butterfly principle butterfly effect yeah chaos theory <laughs> yeah right anyway <laughs> Not the little internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it was great because we were like, wow, okay, yeah. look at the views that we're getting. And then I looked at the stats and I'm like, from India. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. Not a country known for a lot of knitting, although we do have some customers that, from there, I yeah. actually have to say. So that's, yeah. uh, but uh, I couldn't figure out why. And then I looked at the search terms and that was it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so now so. I just did it 15 more times. So I, sorry, <laughs> sorry for everybody that's looking how to do sorry draping and not knitting, but yeah, <laughs> but welcome if you're, <laughs> if you're interested in knitting. Yeah. Okay. So how much, uh, and. I have to apologize because we do have a few little house flies flying around here that we can't get rid of. So if you see us going like that, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's it. I yeah. finished two of my uh, three Tour de Fleece yes. projects. So the burgundy one here is not here. So that's the one that's not finished yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it, and it's kind of funny because I went from the support spindle for this one. Right. And this is entirely done. Well, I did the singles on support spindle, and then my jalligan was right. supply. Right. And then I did the burgundy on my kiwi. Yeah. And this one I did on my electric eel. So okay. I kind of ran the whole gamut of spinning. Right. So a little something for yeah. every level. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. It's too bad you can't see because it is really sparkly. This is it's nice. It's beautiful. I have a picture, yeah. so I'll send it Do to you. Do you? Can yeah. you see the sparkles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So you can send it to me. Yeah. And um, the supports. This one is on the support spindle now. Yes. So Oops, we'll sorry. just show this again. Yeah. So the support spindle, and the. Um, episode that we talked about it was two episodes ago mm -hmm. so th that would be 125 yeah okay so if you want to see Simone spinning with the support spindle you can look at the chapters in episode 125 and I think I made a separate chapter chapter that said support spindle demonstration mm -hmm. I have good news for you <gasps> I think I know what it's going to be <laughs> Scott from Fox Mountain is sending us some support spindles. Yes. 
So he doesn't usually wholesale them, apparently. Yeah. So he asked me, I have to answer him back, if I want the, you can get tabletop bowls or you can get lap bowls. Oh. So I know you use your grandmother's cup. Yeah. But what do you think? Which ones should we get? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll get a couple of each. Yeah. That, that's probably Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so there's, there, and the wood is going to be burled maple and... Shoot, I forget what the other... Cherry? Cherry, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when I get... Th I haven't even ordered them yet. He's just asking me some questions about what I yeah. want. So I'll be ordering them. But he's pretty quick. So if, yeah. when I order them, we'll have them probably in time for the next newsletter or whatever. So you, That's very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> so uh, good. Yeah. Okay. So is it, um, it, uh, it, his are shaped a little bit differently than this. You have yes. one of his, right? This, yeah, I do. Yes. I have a Tibetan. Yeah. Um, that's the style. This cross. Pinks. Oh, okay. Um, no. The Turkish. Is okay. The, one with the, with the, the little cross. That okay. makes the turtle. Yeah. But, um, the Tibetan is kind of like a little bowl like this and then flat on the top. Right. That's right. Um, this is a teardrop. And then, oh, that's what it's called, a teardrop? Because yeah. that's what I was going to ask you about, because it yeah. does look different than what he makes. And then there's Russians, um, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Fangs, okay. P-H-A-N-G. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. But that's a different shape again? Yeah. That's endless. Yeah. I mean, and uh, then Tackleys. Okay. I think those have, like, pretty pretty pointy tips. This okay. one has a metal tip so oh, it's very okay. pointy and okay. it spins fast which okay is kind of fun <laughs> right okay so excellent yeah so that's the tour de fleece and we toured our fleeces yes. again so that's it so that's uh so um i think i'll make this a separate chapter in case somebody's not interested in uh in our spinning ex mm -hmm. escapades but uh it's been very satisfying and i actually did spin every day Except mm -hmm. for one day and the other, the uh, um, next day I spun for an hour. So my spinning improved a lot. I have to say just this, the half an hour a day, yeah. it was, because I, you know, dabbled and whatever and yeah. not, didn't spin consistently enough to really improve. Mm -hmm. But I found uh, that it, I, I went so fast, I started going so fast that my wheel was making a noise. So I had to have Simone <laughs> overhaul it this morning. <laughs> Because I was making a noise I didn't like. So, <laughs> Speedy spinning. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that was great. Yeah. So the so, question is, are you going to continue? Oh, I think so. Good. I like, I'm yeah. really, I'm appreciating at the end of the day and the sign, open signs have come down and mm -hmm. I'm here by myself just for a half an hour and I'm just doing it and I'm finding that I'm more apt to do it because my spinning wheel is out in the mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. So it's not like big, I don't have to haul out my spinning wheel from somewhere yep. and it's all set up to get ready to go. And I find it's a good kind of just a nice relaxation, mm -hmm. just a half an hour. It goes yeah. by fast. Yeah. And then I, then I leave the shop then. So it's good. That sounds yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. I'll keep going. Good. All right. So, but we, we do mostly focus on knitting. So I'm not sure if we have seen this in the flesh before we talked about it. Yes. Okay. So if you remember a while back, we showed you a swatch mm -hmm. of the new yarn that we're going to talk about in the mill section, the new yarn that we're designing. And this was the swatch, the inspiration mm -hmm. for the swatch came from this pattern. That's right. Which is? Rianne or Daffodil by oh, Marie Wallace. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it's got everything. It does. Except for color work. Yeah. <laughs> So it looks a little messy right now because it hasn't been blocked and it's been shoved in my knitting bag, but I have the front and the back completed. It's beautiful. And I'm going to, well, I started working on the sleeves or two at a time so that when one's done, both are done. Yeah, that's good. Um, I call this my wrestling sweater because I work on it okay. whenever Willow's at wrestling. Yeah, Simone's and... daughter is quite a, a great little wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice because, I mean. And she does competitions, so you're knitting yeah. this when you're at the competitions. Yeah. Okay, so there must have been quite a few competitions. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, and practices too. So Right. Yeah, it's just a little something to keep my hands busy while I watch. And the pattern is fairly easily memorized. Is it? It is. It looks complicated. Yeah. Um, there are cables, twisted stitches, lace, a little bit of ginger snap fur. Yeah, no, that's not ginger snap. That's <laughs> off your bat for your spinning bat. That's sparkle. 
<laughs> no, it's off the other, the new one. Okay. Yeah. And it's got a vent, I guess. Um, uh, no, it's, they're just the top. The one side is. Uh, oh no, there is. It's not sewn together yet. Okay, so it's yep. it's just a f straight seam. Yep. Okay. So it's going to be slightly drop shoulder. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's I can't pronounce the name that the yarn. Is it the, the Norwegian? Yeah, it's the Norwegian one. Yeah. Is it Ask? Vilhe? Vil no, the, Vilhe? V the V one. V okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. Um, I do have a Ravelry project page okay. for it. So if you're curious about that, okay. you can check it out. But yeah, I'm. I'll pretty put happy the name, the proper name underneath. Yeah. So, okay. So, so this is this the yellow from the Sun and Set Assault kit? Okay. Yeah. So you're not going to do the Sun and Set Assault. I'm going to do it, but not in yellow. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to be a cloudy day in Sedestal. Okay. Because I have gray yarn picked. Out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right. So that's, uh, that's beaut it's beautiful. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And I think that once I get cracking on the sleeves, I just have a tiny little bit. Right. Okay. Um, it should go fairly quickly. Right. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Beautiful. There we go. All right. And um, so then I, I'm, I'll just update my tune mm -hmm. because um, Simone didn't bring her tune because she didn't knit on it. I didn't knit on it. I was bad. I maybe did 12 rows on mine, so I can't really say I knit on mine either, but <laughs> I will show you that we're still doing it for those that have missed the tune. <laughs> and I really, really wish I had done these this two at a time, I have to say. Oop. Okay, oh, it's all tangled up with my trait. Oh, here we go. All right. So here it is. So have you finished the first side yet? Because you were just doing the sleeve slate. So okay. you really didn't. I work really didn't. Okay. So for the last <laughs> last episode, Simone was at just starting the sleeve, uh, the shaping for around the sleeve. Mm -hmm. So this is the tune T-shirt, and um, I'm really just showing it in case there's people that are watching that don't don't know about it because there's nothing new to say about this the only thing I'll, I'll say again because I've said it before is that I've modified the bottom and I've done a pico edge it was um just a rolled yeah uh, or no it was a it was, it was a garter, garter a yeah. garter edge on it and I did a pico edge which I think the camera picks up okay when I looked at it the last time and this is knit in summer light four ply mm -hmm. Simone's is anchor gray and pickle I'll probably put a picture here mm -hmm. and mine is navy ink and blossom and we're we I love the project but unfortunately I started a second project that I can't put down which I'm going to show <laughs> after Simone <show. laughs> that's my trait or trait sweater and we've also been doing a little bit of reading but we'll talk about yes. it another time. Yes, we're going to talk about it with Betsy yes. when we do the at the end of the in the mill section because yeah. we're all pretty good readers actually. Yeah. We re read quite and a lot. And sometimes so. we get a little distracted with the books. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, people seem to like the fact that we had a conversation about books in the last episode. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that for a little couple episodes, who knows. Yeah. Okay. So tune is still on the books for you and you, or for me and That's you. That's cute, on the books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, then, uh, and you've started a new project. I have. Okay. All right. So this, this is going to look a little wonky and weird. But because it is a weird pattern, isn't it? It is. Yes. But it's so much fun. It's a very old pattern. It is. This is the people beginning. Are screaming, people are screaming at the TV. I know. I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> if you've knit one before, you know exactly what it is because of the yeah. weird kind of like bat wings. Yeah. But this is the Baby Surprise Sweater by Elizabeth Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing it in Selkirk Worsted. Okay. So this is Twilight. A little tiny bit of Blue Poppy. Uh, so Twilight, Blue Poppy, Oyster, Amethyst Brooch and slate oh wow so okay. i'm really just playing okay i change the colors whenever i feel like it and i think it's going to make a cute little gift and isn't that the the that was the kind of the idea behind that pattern yeah like a scrappy you can yeah. use what you have and yeah there's no rules about how long the stripes have to be exactly and, 
So, yes. and why is this famous? Because I know that there there's an adult one as well. Yeah. And is it because of the construct the way the construction goes? The, the construction, construction, the fact that you can use any gauge pretty well. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can use like the size is really dependent upon the yarn that you want to use okay and then your gauge so it they give you a little chart and oh, okay now you can get an updated pdf okay of the pattern so you can get the adult all the way down to baby okay and it includes options for collars and hoods and things oh, like that oh wow okay yeah okay so so what part are we looking at this is the back of the neck right here oh, okay and this is going to be eventually the arms Okay, so we'll have to, we'll have to, <laughs> so we'll have to trust. So is this the room. neck here like this? It is. So it's yep. upside down. Yep. Or top. There go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that is actually the top there. Okay. But it gets folded in a ingenious way. Okay. And there's decreases and increases to add fullness to the sleeves and oh, okay. all this fun shaping. Okay. But yeah, it's just, it's one of those projects that's really satisfying to knit. Yeah. You don't have to put a huge amount of thought into it. Right. And you get to really play with colors. Okay. And Great. they're all, like every single one that you do is different. Because I've seen this on an adult, a woman that mm -hmm. I met had, had one on that she did. Yeah. And I think she did it like years and years ago. Like yeah. when it first, because this has got to be... I don't know, published. Oh, I think what? it was the 70s. Well, yeah, Maybe? I was going to say 80s, but I, yeah. it was, it's long. So yeah. it's good for Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and to be honest, I kind of want an adult one. Do you? With a hood. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. So this one I didn't even know about. You said baby baby surprise sweater one day, and then the next day she was she was knitting it. So yeah. that's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. And cool. I don't know what it is about our Selkirk worsted and garter stitch. It's just squishy. Oh, it's so yummy. Yeah, it's squishy. <laughs> so I will finish off this segment with my trait mm -hmm. by Kate Davies. So this I this was inspired by Simone's trait that mm -hmm. she has. We we're hoping that we're pronouncing that right. Uh, you knit yours in um, point prim sock. No, no. Um, Belfast Mini Mill specialty. Sock. Oh, okay, yeah. specialty sock. Yeah. Um, we had a lady come in and knit another sweater, the Lento, in yes. point prim sock yarn with kid silk haze. Yes. And we oohed and odd so much, and then but I, at the same time I loved. Simone's trait trait mm -hmm. when she came so I said I'm gonna do it with point prim sock yarn kid silk haze and I'm gonna knit that pattern so this is this is the beginning of it so it's a, a bottom up and uh, super simple like it's not really mm -hmm. it's not really taxing there's lots of stock in that on the way up yeah but first of all there's a lot of firsts in this sweater for me so I have actually never knit with point prim sock yarn because mm -hmm. I don't really knit socks right and I've been knitting with so many other things that I've never actually knit a garment out of point print sock which is hard to believe because it's one I mean it's one of our best selling yarns it's lovely and um, I uh, so I decided that I would do this with the kid silk case because that that woman's sweater was like so amazing so amazing yeah. so this is it so it's in Northumberland blue and you can just kind of say, I, I, this is not on purpose. It's just the way that the wool gets dyed. So Northumberland blue and the way that the colors are going, I'm not alternating the skeins. So there's another case of do, don't do as I do, do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, I will, if I have my other skeins caked up, but if I think that there's, a lot of pooling then I will alternate when I get close to changing the the skein or if I don't think that they're like t they're together but I think that the kid silk haze is just enough to mask if there's anything wonky going on yes so what it's creating is look at that do you see it looks like waves it's heathered and sparkled and yeah beautiful. it looks like it's got like waves of color which is like just like the Northumberland straight yep. I'm loving it I'm loving it. So um, the Point Prim Sock Yarn is Northumberland Blue and the, I forget what the number is, I think it's 592 Kid Silk Haze Heavenly is the name. And so the, I've never knit with Point Prim Sock Yarn and I've never done Twisted Rib 
Mm -hmm. Why have I never done Twisted Rib before? I loved it. It's amazing. It, and, you know, it's like super simple. You knit mm -hmm. pearl, but you're knitting the stitches, knit it through the back loop on the knit stitch. And it just pops. Yeah. And it's super like squishy and accord, accordion like. And I just, I, I, in, I mean, ribbing is not the most exciting thing in the world, but I came, I came into work the next day that someone was there and I was like, how is it that I've never done twisted rib? Who would, why would you do anything else? Yeah. Except for twisted rib. Yeah. It's amazing. Everybody's going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, uh, and I can't stop working on it. Yeah. I just, it's, I, it's really, really pleasurable to knit. And uh, it goes pretty fast because with the, so the point prim sock yarn is obviously a fingering weight, but that, you know, a little bit of Kid Silk Haze just bulks it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, so would you classify uh, this as potato chip knitting? Yeah, I'm watching, I'm watching um, British murder mysteries while I'm knitting it and I'm not missing anything in the murder mystery. So it's like, so it's wonderful. It's, yeah, it's wonderful. And you just keep going and it's just, yeah. it's just, it's growing. So. I should, I should make an, I don't think I, if I've already said this, then tell me and I won't say it again because it's, it's, uh, I had, when I joined in the round, I had my, my join twisted. Did I tell you that? No. Okay. So I'm, the reason why I'm saying it is because we had a customer, a customer came in mm -hmm. and she had never knit in the round. She okay. knit pieces and she was terrified because she was worried that she was going to twist the twist the knitting mm -hmm. so i said well as a matter of fact i just did that so it doesn't really happen to me I, i'm usually pretty good yeah so but now this is twice my cowl cardigan didn't have a twist yep. <laughs> so, and this actually was twisted but um there's no need to panic because you can knit up to two rows mm -hmm. and if it's not if it's twisted you just untwist it even after after two rows and on the by the time you get three rows you're too you're, late yeah you're too late but with at two rows you can still straighten it out and it's really a lot easier to see what yeah. the situation is with your with your um cast on if it's twisted mm -hmm. or not it does leave a little notch so yeah. full disclosure i'm just going to show you that there is a little bit of a notch there because i did get to i doubt that you can even see it uh, it's just right right here and uh, but that's not a problem because when you put your end in and you make a fake stitch with your end and close it you you can't see it because I already tried I tried it I didn't want to I didn't want to um, sew in the end yet because mm -hmm. as I had said too that I made my swatch gauge and then changed what I want it so I'm going to measure my gauge on this and I'm totally prepared to rip it out if it's bad but I can tell it's good so I'm yeah. not really too worried but I didn't want to sew in my end until I knew for sure that I didn't have to rip it out we're playing fast and loose with the knitting lately. I know I know we're breaking all the rules so, anyway. but you know what that's kind of fun it is yeah we get to be mavericks we, we played by all the rules we know what the rules are we know why there's rules yeah and now we're breaking them yep okay. and if we break them and it ends up badly bad us we don't care yeah yeah we'll just do it over again okay so this is that so this uh is a trite trait and i'm i love the color combination it's like it's going to be warm though yeah it's not going to be a summer i'm not going to get away with it in the summer it'll no. be like a fall and winter sweater yeah definitely yeah so great so i think is there anything else I don't think so. I think that's it. Yeah. So we'll um, we'll do the in the mill section with Betsy. Yep. And we're going to talk about our books. Yes. In, the, in that section. So we'll see you there. Oh. <laughs> we got a lot of spinning information, and uh, we all we really had fun with Tour de Fleece. So uh, we really enjoyed doing that. And like I said in in that uh, section, I think I'm going going to continue to do it because it was actually a nice ending for of the day for me uh in, when we're uh, working here every day so i i will continue that and what about that rianne sweater it's beautiful that simone's working on so that's uh that's great so lots of knitting in that section now we're going to go and talk with betsy about her trip to norway which sounds like it was absolutely fantastic 
and she got to shop for Norwegian yarns and went to a little farm and bought uh, yarn from a little wool shop that gets their, their wool from a, a close by farm. So it's been really, really interesting. And Betsy actually knit a new pattern uh, that she came up with, with uh, her husband designed the, the motif and Betsy knit the pattern that she knit while she was on her cruise. So you can check that out in the segment with Betsy. So we'll go there. Hi, Betsy. Hi, you. Welcome back. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you had a mountain to die when you got back. I, I tried to do a little bit. Oh, a mountain. A, mount, a, a, mount, a, a mountain of dying. To do. I was yes. like, a mountain to die. Yes. yes. A mountain of dying to be yes. done. Yes. So let's get right to the trip. Yeah. How was it? Really, really beautiful. Yes. yes. Betsy went on a cruise. In Norway. in Norway. So what we did was in and out of the fjords. Right. So most of our time was spent just looking at beautiful, beautiful, Vistas. yeah, green mountains up along the side of the fjord that we could look Are at. Are they really steep? Uh, I think so. So I should qualify, first of all. I have never been to the Rockies or oh, okay. the Swiss Alps or anything okay. of that. So for me, these were large mountains. But okay. I do realize there are larger ones out there but I think like they were pretty steep because we did a couple hiking trips and a biking trip and like you have to zigzag back and forth okay. to go up the mountain okay um oh, so the they don't make you go right no up. Yeah, <laughs> well goodness. we did climb one that way and yes that was like they had built steps into it oh so okay. you're going up these rock steps okay. all the way up um, but any time that we were biking or any of the vehicles driving around us, it's back and forth okay. across the mountain to okay. get up. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And um, how was the cruise? Really lovely. It's Yeah. yeah. It was was a it a cruise. big ship? Yeah. I was on one of the, the super large, well-known cruises. Oh, okay. So, yeah. okay. But we did see the ship that I believe that Arne and Carlos travel on. Oh, so I wasn't okay. on their cruise, but I'm pretty sure we saw, I think it's called the Hurtigurten. gurten <laughs> Oh, yeah. and is it small compared, yeah. to, yes, the compared massive... to the massive American one that we were on? Yes. Okay. Um, so it came into port the same day that we were in this port. It right. doesn't stay as long because it also operates as a ferry. So oh, it hits okay. way more locations than oh, okay. ours did. Okay. Um, but we saw it come in and Matthew was like, you should check their schedule. Are they on it? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think this time of year. No, they're, they're off probably. Yeah, I think they do theirs earlier in the season. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you got to shop for yarn though. I did. I went to mm. a lot of different yarn shops. Oops, pardon me. I bumped a table. At yeah. one point, um, I actually was in the shop and there was just so much yarn and it was like so beautiful and I started shutting down and my husband oh. was like, no, 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 now is not the time to panic. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're here, you need to make some decisions. And I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. So at that particular shop, I bought buttons. Oh, okay. So you never bought yarn in there? No. There's so much yarn and I'm not someone who wants to have a stash a stash right. actually stresses me out right um so i was really trying to purchase projects worth of yarn so right. i had some patterns picked out before i went and i was buying for those patterns right so i only came home with i mean only i say with three different sweaters worth um yeah so i have three right. patterns planned out that okay I'll, that i'll do so um we've both knit Sid Volhoyvik yeah. sweaters, and uh, she uses the yarn from Hellesvog. Hellesvog? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, so you were in a store that had so, that yarn? Yeah, most yeah. of the stores do. Okay. Um, I purposely was looking for a store. I'm probably going to slaughter this Norwegian folks, so just bear with me. But we purposely looked for stores that they call, I think they're called Husfliden. Okay. Um, which are kind of like a yarn store slash housewares but they also carry a lot of the folk costume oh, pieces. Oh, okay. So you can, I think you can go in and actually like order your folk costume from them and, and get like one made oh, okay. custom fit to like you. Like what Arne and Carlos yes, did. Yes, but, but they, they made did. theirs. But they, they did. Kept, they, yeah. That's the measurements done at, at one of these places. So right. those were kind of my favorite yarn okay. stores. There's lots of big ones in the city, but these ones I really like because they had a lot of character and right. just, so they carried the, the Hillisvog yarn okay. for sure. Okay, and uh, so what so, did you get? I'm going with the pattern I'm going to do is called Rosa at the Ball, and I purchased Sitzel's book right 
few months ago now. So you can order these as kits online. Mm -hmm. I could have ordered it and had it sent here, but I was there. So right. of course. I wanted to. And the store I bought it at was basically the Norwegian version of our store. Oh, okay. So it was just so cute. The lady was so lovely, and I was like, I have to support this place. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Rather than the big The, the big, big ones, one. yeah. yeah. And it was okay. in a tiny right. little town called Flom. Okay. Literally, like, um, mountains at both sides with a massive waterfall oh, coming down into okay. one of them. Beautiful. Yeah. There was mm -hmm. a train that came into it. You could take the train and ride it up the mountain. We didn't, we don't tend to do the the offered excursions. Right. We like to wander out on our own and just find stuff. Right. So let my husband half kill me dragging me up mountains. But yes. anyway, <laughs> I'm always glad I did it in the end. Yeah. So that was this village that we were in. I would call it a village. Okay. Yeah, it had a roaring river, like oh. crashing glacial river down through the middle of it. Oh, it was so wow. beautiful. Nice. And it was raining and drizzly that day, which yeah. we were assured many times over, this is Norway summer, people. Get over it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. they don't get like bright sunny days? No, because we headed right up. We were pretty far north and it was rain every day. Oh, cold. oh like, okay. So did you wear your hat that you knit? I did. Okay. Yes. Sometimes I even said, why didn't we pack mitts? Oh. It was cold sometimes on oh, the boat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the wind would blow. So you'd be out and if you wanted to like enjoy them, the fjords for any length of time. We had a blanket we would wrap around. Oh, okay. Kind of sit oh, okay. Yeah. So I thought it would be summer, but not like. It was averaging 13 degrees. Oh, okay. Um, that's Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to do Rosa at the Ball, which mm. is this combination of colors here. beautiful combination of colors. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yes. So the main body is this one here. And then the all so, the accent colors. So um, I thought, oh, so they must be changing the label for the Ask or whatever. This oh, maybe. Is how you pronounce it. I okay. did end up with a different one for this one just because she didn't have the number of skeins I needed. So this one's a lamb's wool. Okay. But, so I think this is, um, I, I'm, I think I've mentioned this before when I was doing the Paisley um, and you had your son instead of stall, yes. car, or sweater, is that I asked, um, I wanted to do the sun instead of stall, but yellow, I don't do yellow. So I asked her to pick out some colors nice. for mine. And I actually have some of these colors like this. You think this is what it is. And when you took that out of your bag, I was like, oh so beautiful and then i said i think i'm gonna have to look in the box of my Pull my kit yours. again and see because yeah. it's uh it's a beautiful yeah. combination of colors so, so i would kind of describe it it is a sticky yarn so you have yeah. to do a steak which this is like perfectly made for that yeah um, you can even just as you're touching and like when you go to cake it you can feel it wanting to already Come grab together to itself yeah. yeah so i've steeped with it before and it's really not frightening at all so this uh i actually use this exact color in my my cardigan actually which is funny isn't it because when you see it in the picture and in your cardigan you think more purple yeah but then when you actually see it like it's there's, brown yeah but there's a real purple kind of hue to yeah. it. i'm very excited yes yeah yeah nice. i think it, i held it up and my husband assured me oh yes that'll yes. work for you yes so. yeah. along with these bright pinks yeah your favorite yes yeah love them yeah. Nice. So that's that one I'm going to do. And then the other one that was also in this same shop that I got really excited about because she shared that it was her niece right. who lived four kilometers down the road in a farm that we would be able to see when we traveled back out the fjord and we would see the sheep on the hillside. They right. call it a hillside. I think these sheep live like <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have one half of their body shorter than the other right. to accommodate. That, that's what we... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a friend, and I had a friend that we worked with, and she was. There was a man that walked by that actually had one leg shorter, shorter than the other, which was too bad. And she goes, "Oh, he must be a side heel gouger." <laughs> well, that's that's what these sheep, I think, would be. Either that, or like <laughs> they're gonna lose it. <laughs> because we no one can understand you. I know. But because when we, that's all, it's awful. I know. Don't, but it, when we heard her say that for the very first time, it describes it. Like if you have to walk on a mountainside, yeah. it describes it perfectly. Yeah, it does. Well, and even like when we were coming down, anyway, we won't get into that. But oh. yes, so these sheep, I think. Are side, yes, yeah, okay. are side hill gougers. Okay. So we could see it and it was beautiful. Oh. Um, so she raises the sheep 
I think she even spins the yarn herself oh, okay. from those sheep. Okay. So, you know, kind of like you. Yeah. And then um, she designed the pattern. So the pattern for this one, I'm going to show it here. Try not to crinkle the bag. I know. Can, can you see so it? Loud. It's got sheep on the top. It does. Right? And oh, they're cute. Norwegian sheep. Oh. They have the, like... The little oh yes. curly horns yes. of the Norwegian okay, sheep. Perfect. So when I and I saw uh, she had a sample knit up there, and I was like, oh, I want that. Right. So, so I'm going to make the body out of the darker and okay. the color work out of the lighter. And I have to say, like this is this is toothy, toothy. Yeah, I I can't wear it next to skin for me. It, mm. I couldn't handle it. So I'm going to make it large enough that it will go over top of I don't right. know a turtleneck or something. Okay. It'll. It'll have great weather wear. Like yeah. I have no doubt that this will be practically waterproof. Right. Um, if I do it at a tight enough gauge, windproof. Which yeah. And it'll wear. It'll last forever. forever. Yeah. yeah. And these yeah. sheep need that. Like yeah. I understand why their wool is like that because it was raining, and if it's not raining in Ju like it was July. If that's cold in July, right. imagine what they're living through in January. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so and you know they they. Um, it is true like they're the sheep around here are soft they are soft yeah, yeah. soft just like soft living yeah. and even though it gets cold it's not the same yeah. it's actually um we've talked about this before in the farm section is that it's it's worse for a sheep to be at like five degrees celsius with rain and wind yeah that's so, like the worst condition so i think this stuff i would like i bet you'd have to soak it quite a while to get it to absorb the water Oh yeah. Like so I'm yeah. I'm thinking it it's, would just it smells it smells just like when you smell the sheep out in the sun. Out in the sun. Yeah. When it's when the wool is on them. That's so, what it smells. It's beautiful. That's was, one of my favorite smells. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely sheepy. Yeah. Definitely exactly. sheepy. So I'm really excited about this one just for its authenticity. It's it was all within like a five kilometer radius right. that it all happened, which is um, why some people come to our shop. Exactly, the same thing. So yeah, yeah so exactly. I had to do the we appreciate that the Norwegian version of what happens here. Yeah, so that'll be that project. Uh, you can feel the lanolin in it too. Is eh? there still some there? Oh yeah, yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, yeah, oh, nice, really okay. nice. So we had a little discussion before the podcast because we said this is farm wool. Yes, and. Um, we want to say this in the right way. Yes. We think this is beautiful. Yes. And it's going to make a beautiful, beautiful sweater. You won't be able to wear it close to your no, skin. I will it not. wouldn't bother me at all. Really? Yeah. Gosh. I really, okay. I don't, it wouldn't be a problem okay. for me because I don't, I'm really not like when, when people write to me and say, is your wool scratchy? You don't know how to I answer. I said, don't, oh, okay. I can't answer you. Well, because, I can speak to that because yeah. I could not wear this next to skin. Um, and our stuff, I can. Yeah. Like, our sheep are soft. I think they've been well pampered. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the breeds of sheep. Yes. Yeah. So the breed is completely different. And can the sheep have been well pampered? Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, and I think that this is when we say that we spin our own wool and it's farm wool, I think this is what people are Imagine. thinking of. Yeah. Because this is typically like Shetland yeah. wool is has similar to this. To yeah. The Norwegian wool has the, the, this feel, obviously yeah. this is Norwegian wool, but this is not how our wool no. feels. And this, like I can understand feeling this, why they're a bit confounded as to why we're hesitant to steak. Yeah. Because this, like this once knitted together is not going to just fall apart. Right. You, you will have to pull this apart. Yeah. So I, I understand. So it, perfect for those kind of projects right. where you're, you're everything has its purpose yeah. Yeah. that's the and yeah. long wearing this is yes. gonna yeah be Beautiful. long wearing and i can just see that uh the staples are pretty long too because i saw a little up. piece on one of these i think that anyway like you've got yeah, it's long, long, long which there. means that it's it's good wearability. It's yeah. beautiful. Good. Yeah. And these are nice. natural. This is undyed. Mm -hmm. So there's no no color in that. Right. Yeah. So Lovely. I'm really excited about diving into these projects. I have no idea how long they'll take me. Yeah. But that's okay because okay. these are fun. Like once in a lifetime knits. Right. Yeah. Right. Fun. Okay. Oh, I did knit while I was actually on the boat. Oh, okay. I did. Oh. I know I you can't all... believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> It's another hat. No, but it's so nice. Oh, it's really when she pulls that out you. of her bag. We have a little kind of a little meeting before we just to kind of very loosely 
thing, you know, what are we going to talk about and that kind of thing. Like not, not really structured, but just bigger. And she pulled that out of her, her bag. And I was like, <gasps> Argyle. So, yeah. Another one put together the chart designed by my husband. So this is for him again. Um, and the last one I'd made, he took note as did I, that the Argyle wasn't quite right. Right. If I had wanted to add the, the single stripe in, we could not have done it because it wasn't lining up properly. Yeah. Okay. So this time he sat down with the iPad and empty squares and actually like drew out okay. the pattern he wanted. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, I'm going to just go in. Sure. Yeah. This is how I work. So when I, for me to get good at something, I have to do it like six or seven times. Yeah. So well, with each hat it is I'm doing, true it's getting better. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> when you're, like my spinning, I talk about that with Simone. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I really like it. It's he likes his beanie style. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And the color combination is gorgeous. It's great. So this was made. I used some leftover yarn of ours that we had been doing practice colors or I don't know what else right. to call it. So we don't actually have this, but we did pull out from yeah. the um, felted tweed. The it's colors. made out of uh, sock. I missed one. I've dropped one or it disappeared somewhere down. Oh. oh. It's all the way under my chair. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So we pulled the colors from felted tweed mm -hmm. um, that would match it. I'm not doing the pattern today. I don't know, folks. Maybe someday I'll write a book. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but if you like that color combination, mm -hmm. this is it right here. Yeah. So what Rowan felted tweed, 151 bilberry. Yeah. This is 161 avocado, and this is 192 amethyst. Yes. And it's the per almost the perfect match to for it. this, which is um, really proves the, the saying or the whatever, is that when you have that just a little pop of something that doesn't look like it might go, yeah. it's, it, I mean, this looks like it goes, but it's that, that pop of green that really is works. Really, really beautiful. And I'll admit that we didn't get that right on the first try. So I oh. had sulfur, I think it was called, sulfur yeah. with me felted Which tweed. Is more yellow. A yellow green. And we, uh, when we had held them all together, it looked fine. But then when I went and kind of started, I did duplicate stitch to put that green right. part on. And when I started it, I could see he was sitting beside me and he looked over and he did like a double take. And I was like, oh. You don't like that, do you? Yeah. So it just so happened that day we had bought the one right. from Hillis Fog and it was a much better, a more greener, sort of right. more lime based to right. it instead of the yellow. And that right. was perfect. Right. And um, so it's interesting that give yourself a break. If yeah. you want to try this, like map out a pattern like this you're for yourself, then um, just do duplicate stitch for yes. this. Oh, yeah. Just, I just did not, do, honestly. I did not hold three strands across it and yes. do that color work. You're, you're, that's yeah. crazy making. <laughs> just it's same reason like why I did it for my uh, for my tungsten yes. sweater that I did as well, that stripe. It was just nuts to and try to And that's where I got it. the idea. I was like, yeah. oh, Kim did it. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's perfect. The key is just, yeah. just make sure you, you, you pay attention to your tension while you're doing your duplicate yeah. stitch. I did of. a tutorial yeah. on duplicate oh, stitch. Oh, perfect. So yeah. uh, if you want to take, I'll, I'll put, if I can, figure out how to get the card right. I'll put a card here somewhere. <laughs> Everybody says it's here, but it's actually over there when you're watching TV or whatever. So I, or you can just go to our channel and in the tutorial section, the playlist, I actually have a play, uh, a tutorial on duplicate stitch. So yeah. you can do that. And you can add details and save yourself headache. And it actually, it's fun because then it's you not watch cheating. it come alive. I know it's, it's, yeah. it is fun. Great fun. So. Good. Yeah. So All that right. was, that was our trip. It was fantastic and amazing. And I feel greatly grateful, greatly grateful that I yeah. went on it. <laughs> yeah, lovely. So, and happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. So, and was your anniversary like right, really a, at the time? No, it's on the 23rd, officially of August 23rd. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it hasn't happened yet. No, it hasn't. Oh, but okay. my husband's a teacher. It's often too late to travel right. Right. on our anniversary. He's thinking back to work and back to school planning right. at that okay. point. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So it's in spirit. Yeah, it was exactly. Fine. Okay, great. So you ha you showed that a finished object, but yeah. you have projects that you're knitting that you're or crocheting that you haven't shown. Oh, right. So we're going to talk about that in case people are wondering. Yes. So I was working on the giraffe bag. It's a mosaic crochet project by Outstanding Crochet. And I have decided to step back and pull it out. 
I still want to do the pattern, but I made the wrong yarn choice. Right. And rather than continuing with this yarn that really is begging to be made into a garment, right. <laughs> I'm going to pull it out, use that yarn for a garment. And I, I think I want to use cotton. A bag yeah. just, her original pattern is with cotton. Right. And I understand why now. Yeah. It just, it'll give it structure. It'll give it a smoothness. Right. It'll just be all around better. And the last time that you had it here, yep. so we'll show a picture of what the design actually yes. looks like. But uh, the last time you had your, it felt beautiful. Yeah. But I... I and I think I asked you in one of the podcasts saying, "Is it is it going to be too stretchy?" And you yeah. said, "Oh no, I'm going to line it with yeah. a." But I'll still line kind of, it. But oof, flies. <laughs> yes, well, I already explained that we're probably going to see some, but it's um, it's soft. It's very soft, and it just, I just think it it's better suited for a garment. And sometimes yeah. that might happen with your yarn. You start a yeah. project and you go, you know what, this project wants to be something yeah. else, and yeah. so don't be afraid to. Well, I'm not afraid to, no. it's not, to me, it's not a failure or a mistake. This yeah. is how I work. I'm very much a trial and error person. Right. So it's no big deal for me to have time yeah. lost or, yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. time. It's all, it's all, that. it's all just knitting. Yes. Anyway. I'm yeah. going to be making or creating no matter what. So yeah. sometimes it, most times it doesn't really matter exactly right. what I'm doing. I think we've talked about this before. But we've had, and we have lots of people come into the shop, and they're at all different skill levels yeah. of, of uh, knitting. So we had um, these little cowls that we made that were literally a swatch yeah. for felted tweed color because you had to knit the ball to really see how the, the color was going to play in those balls. And we made these little cowls, which were just a swatch. So there's no pattern. It's yeah. just cast on 120 stitches do a little bit of a rib if you want yeah. but some some of them have no rib it's just stocking that up. all the way yeah. up start binding off when you think you're might run like, out of yarn don't, yeah <laughs> you're going to run out of yarn and that's it so okay. and some people want to make them because it's a great beginner project but they fret over mm -hmm. the fact that there's no pattern written down and there's like a, it's a, and it's it's um they don't want to pull I, just well just pull, pull it out. out. Yeah. If you don't like it and you make a mistake, just pull it out. Yeah. And I used to be one of those knitters oh. that I never wanted to pull anything back. So I would either put up with a mistake, which drove my OCD brain crazy <laughs> because I was like, I like you things to it. be, I always see it. Yeah. And I don't know why. And the minute that I released myself of just pull it out and it's just all knitting anyway, yeah. it's so freeing. Well, you can also, it allows you to be much more creative because yes. if you're not worried about making a mistake, right. then you can find beautiful things that you didn't even know you were looking for. Right, yeah. right. And it's the same when, um, I remember when I first started, because I'm, I'm, I get a big kick out of laddering down and fixing things. Oh, okay. And I've talked about this before because it was, it was really funny that night at a knit night. I had my, when I was knitting the Trondheim knit, knit mittens right. for the sample for the store for the kit, I made a mistake and I found it. It must have been like 15 or 20 rows down in the mitten. And I just started laddering it down. And there was like half of the, half of the um, group said, you're crazy. Yeah. And the other half was like, oh my God, how could you do that? Oh my, you just, you'll never get it back. You'll never oh, get yeah, it back. And, yeah. and, and I was like, well, if it doesn't work, I have to rip back anyway. Yeah. So, so why would I rip first? Right. If in case this works. I, I did that recently with the project and I really like it. You just get out a nice fine crochet hook. Yeah. And then you and mine was even like I was passing some sections were pearl and right. some were stockinette. Right. So right. I had to figure out whether I was gonna pull the loop behind yeah. or in front. Yeah. I was having fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah. And the worst thing could ha that will happen is that you do Start actually over. have to rip it yeah. out. So <laughs> But once, I think that that is, there's two major um, steps, I think, that I took in my knitting journey. The first one was figuring out how to substitute yarns yes. and have the garment still fit you. Yeah. Big, that's a big win for a knitter because it opens up things for you. That Especially are, if a pattern was written 20 years ago and yeah, the yarn doesn't exist exactly. anymore. Exactly. So yeah. that's a big freedom making Thanks. skill. That's not hard, really. Yeah. Once you do it, it's yeah. scary. I, I trust me. I know it's scary, but it's you can. It's 
you, if you know what to do, it's not that hard. And the second one was giving up the idea that you have to, that you're, you're still knitting if it's not perfect and you have to rip it out. You're still an okay knitter. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, Or the idea that you're ever going to be able to knit a piece from start to finish yeah. perfectly. It so, never happened. Trust yeah. me. Embrace fixing errors. Otherwise, you're just going to get frustrated because you're going to knit the same three inches over and over and over again. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, yeah. I have never... People come in and I've knit, I don't know how many millions of stitches I've made now with the garments and they come in and they say, oh, you're such a good knitter. I said, well, that one I ripped out half of it. This one I started over three times. This one I was, but you get there in the end. Yes. But it, you're right. That's a good, what you just said is really yeah. good. If you think you're going to knit from the very first stitch to the all end. the way to the end and not make a mistake, no. it's not going to happen. And then your next thing is to learn how to fudge it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that gets helpful too. Well, yeah. actually, it's more about learning when fudging is appropriate and right. when it's not. And what you can so, live with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway, now we sit, sound like we're preaching a little bit, but it is <laughs> trust us. Yeah. But if you just, if you're, if you enjoy knitting, which we're assuming that the knitters that are watching do enjoy <laughs> knitting, then it's just more knitting. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're, if you're using good materials, yes, they're for, wool is one of the most forgiving craft mediums that you can, work that you with. can work with. Yeah. Cause all you, you can rip it out, soak it. It's yeah. right back to the way it was when you bought yeah. it. I think I was even watching a video this week where someone was taking, they took yarn, cutting it into snips and putting it through their hand carter. Right. And actually like, Starting re completely fresh and re-spinning it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That might be a bit extreme. Yeah. But, but the, the yeah, idea. Then and then you need, you need to learn to spin. Yeah. <laughs> but just the fact that it's do Like, what a resource. That's my, my. It's an amazing. When you talk renewable resource. Yes. Like, I love yes. it. Wool, just love it. Wool yarn is yeah. really, it's really something. Anyway. Yeah. So. Whew, okay. We got it right. <laughs> We should probably just wrap this whole thing up. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think we'll do. So anyway, I'm glad you had a great trip. I did. And I'm glad to be back too. That's, yeah, that's that we're was glad to have an you amazing back. moment when I realized I'm just as happy to go back home and back to work as I was being on the trip. Like, Yay. I'm not saying this as though I've lived my life this way, people. <laughs> <laughs> this really, like, I really have found a place that oh, I love and enjoy. Yay. And it was amazing. Yes. So it is amazing. Yes. And we're really happy that you're back. Thank you. Okay. So see ya. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. -bye. So that's, uh, that's about it. We, uh, it's kind of a long podcast. It's so, so we've talked a lot, but there was a lot to catch up on. And uh, I'm just going to do a really, really quick fiber festival update. So again, the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival is going to take place October 5th to the 7th, 2023. And it will take place in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island at the Delta Convention Center. Um, there's links on the, if you Google PEI Fiber Festival, you will find uh, the PEI Fiber Festival website. There are links on the festival website for um, hotels that are offering special rates for the Fiber Festival. Some of those special rate offers start to end at the end of August or the beginning of September. So if you haven't already booked and you know that you're coming for sure, then you might want to uh, book your room because the availability is going, going to start to get uh, squeezed uh, for those for the special rate. At the timing of year, there should be rooms available in Prince Edward Island. It's not our peak season, but if you want the special rate, um, you should probably book in advance. Also, uh, the classes are now filling up. So we've got uh, a lot of classes that have started to fill up uh, now. So if, you, if you're um, able to firm up your plans and uh, you want to take a workshop then you should probably take a look at that uh, it's getting a little bit tight now for a lot of the workshops and there are several that have sold out so we hope you can join us and um, uh, some people have asked if the store our store will be open during the fiber festival and that is the intention that we the store will be open as well but um, we're going to have a lot of the a lot of the things that we carry will be with us at the festival. So uh, you're welcome to come to the store. 
Um, if that changes, I'll let you know. Um, we're just kind of a little bit trying to figure out how we can man the booths and keep the store open. So that's a little bit of a challenge, but uh, I'll let you know for sure uh, as we get closer to the time, if the store will be open or not, if we're able to keep it open while you're here. So now we go to the harmony part. Um, this harmony part is really more about the music, just to take a few minutes to sit and relax and enjoy some uplifting music. So I, with this, I wish you a great two weeks and I hope you find joy in all your crafting and I hope you had fun with us today and thank you very much for watching. If you're not subscribed, I encourage you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us with uh, YouTube and have a great two weeks and we'll see you at, at next time at, on episode 128. Okay, bye. <music>